This is the first section on chapter one on data collection and this section is on populations and samples. So the first thing is I'm going to list below uh, some definitions. Okay, so let's go through these definitions here. So a population is all of the items of interest. So this might be the whole population of a country. It may be all the items in a shop, for example. A census observes, collects data from the whole population. So that may be a whole population of people, or it might be a whole set of items. So it may be a factory that's producing, uh, let's say, tins of soup, and they will collect data up from every tin of soup if it's a census. Whereas a sample observes and collect or collects data from a part of the population. So if we go back to our factory again, producing these tins of soup, maybe um, they may take a sample of maybe 10 or 20 tins that they produce out of maybe tens of thousands and just collect and uh, observe the data from that smaller part of the population. Each unit of the population is called a sampling unit. When we name or number sampling units, the resulting list is called a sampling frame. And this last bit here, we're going to look at the advantages and disadvantages of a census. Well, a census is accurate because you're collecting data from every item in the population. However, it's expensive and time consuming. There may be lots and lots of data that needs to be analyzed. And it could end up destroying all the items. For example, if we go back to our uh, factory example of a factory producing tins of soup, if they need to sample the soup in the tins and they did a census, then they'd have to open every single tin and sample it and they'd end up destroying all the items and not selling anything. Not a good business model. A sample is different to a census in that we just look and collect data from a part of the population, a small part of the population. Well, it's quick, it's cheap. However, it may not be as accurate as a census, or it may not be as informative. We may not have collected enough data to actually analyze it and come up with any uh, patterns. Example one, a supermarket wants to test the delivery of avocados for ripeness by cutting them in half. Part A, it's asking us to suggest a reason why the supermarket should not test all the avocados in the delivery. Well, they will end up destroying all of the avocados and there won't be any left to sell. Okay, it says here the supermarket tests a sample of five, avocado, five avocados and finds that four of them are ripe. They estimate that 80% of the avocados in the delivery are ripe. Part B suggests one way that the supermarket could improve their estimate. Well, they could improve their estimate by taking a larger sample, five avocados. I mean, I don't know how many they've had delivered, but five avocados is quite a small sample. So um, they can improve their estimate by increasing the size of the sample. Okay, so you can see it put in words here. So you should now be able to do exercise 1A on page three of the textbook.